tough job market. Rigorous technical interviews. Companies are doing literally whatever they want. Some companies, not all of them. Those are definitely challenges that we are going through right now as a tech industry as a whole. However, however, this is not really your problem or a problem for you. I do admit that the competition is higher right now. I do admit that there are companies right now that realize that they can do literally whatever the fuck they want to do and um, be okay with that because um, software developers, they are software developers who are in a tough situation and they, they, they will have to be okay with that. Not all companies, not all companies, not all companies. So, but here's the thing. The problem, the problem, why so many software developers are struggling to land a job right now. I think the core problem, the more people I talk to, the more I've realized that the core problem is an imposter syndrome in one of the other shapes or forms, and we're going to dissect it. And actually, it's such an important and big topic that I am starting a new series of live streams where we're going to talk about each aspect separately and not from the standpoint like imposter syndrome is bad and confidence is good. Just be confident. Put yourself out there. No, we're gonna dissect each and every aspect. So today I'm going. Um, today I'm going to give you just like a like kind of summary what what we're gonna talk about throughout the week. But hear me out. I mean, if you think that you don't have a pastor syndrome, I encourage you to listen to this video to watch this video. I, I uh, stay with me. Stay with me for a second. So. How imposter syndrome shows up in your resume, in your skill set, in your LinkedIn profile, in your content, if you even create content. By the way, the reason why you are not creating content right now, and the reason why you are not putting yourself out there, the reason why you are not sharing your public opinion or opinion, your, your opinion publicly, because of imposter syndrome. It's so easy, it's so much easier for you to stay in the shadows and to watch others sharing their opinions rather than you pick up the camera and talk to the camera and sharing and, and sharing your opinion. It's because of the imposter syndrome. So when you think that uh, you don't have enough experience, when you think that you don't have enough technical skills, when you think that something is missing, something is broken, and something is not quite well, it will be reflecting on your resume. How? The lack of quantifiable results. It's not because you don't know how to write resume, however, not many people know how to write resume, but the reason why people like pe people are struggle so much with putting together quantifiable results, showing their achievements, showing their dopeness, the reason why they struggle with it so much is because of the imposter syndrome. They don't think they're worth it. Subconsciously, they may not think that consciously, but subconsciously, oh, it's going to be really cocky. Oh, but did I really? Oh, but I need to write that feature myself. Who cares? You were part of it. You did it. You were part of it. You did it. Your resume is not, is not a lie detector. I'm not encouraging to, to you to lie on the resume. No, don't lie on your resume, but amplify your achievements. If you were working on the feature, you built that feature. You can elaborate that you work to, together with other engineers, of course, you, 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 whatever. But amplify your voice. And that imposter syndrome inside of you prevents you from doing that. On your LinkedIn profile, you rather not 
optimize your LinkedIn profile, you rather not put uh, information that will attract recruiters to you or you rather think that like well i'm not good at social media i don't know how to put it together it's not because you don't know how to put it together because deep down you think that you're just not good enough deep down you just think that you're not good enough even if you don't admit like even if you think like well i'm fine like I have a job, I always had a job and you know, I'm, I'm managing, so like I, I, I should be okay. But deep down, deep down, if you're okay, if you think that you're okay, if you think that you're not affected by imposter syndrome, so why are you not communicating your value? And if you are, like if you are, if you communicate your value, if you show up, show out, put yourself out there, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to many engineers who don't and who don't think that it's a problem, but it's a problem, but it is a problem. And then it have, well, and then you look at the market and then you look at the layoff and then you all of a sudden put in your head that like, oh, there's so much competition. Oh, like nobody's hiring. Oh, there are no roles. Oh, you put yourself in the lack mindset. You create your reality from the lack mindset. And this is like, the, 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 this is serious and I'm so passionate about it because this is something that I see. And even when you land a job or a land, rather interview, you go there all worked up that you're going to mess it up because you're not good enough, you don't have enough skills, you don't have enough experience. And you're timid when recruiter asks you like, how much do you wanna make? What is your salary expectation? You're a little timid because you've been laid off probably for a little while or uh, you don't have a job. So like, you don't wanna scare them off. So like, you lower your price. So imposter syndrome really, really messes you up in terms of your skills. Too. You know, a little story about myself. Uh, I started as a QA engineer. You know why? You know why? You know why I started as a QA engineer? Because I didn't think that I could code. Mm -hmm. I said it in the previous video. I, I didn't think that I could code. So imposter syndrome affected my learning abilities because I didn't think that I could code. And I went for low, you know, low hanging fruit, QA engineer. And in reality, it was not, it was not as easy. It was not as easy. It was very specialized. It was very unique. So that's, that, that helped. And not many people know about it and not people, not many people are going after it. So it was in my advantage, but I went for QA, not because I, I like quality so much. I like testing so much. No. I went for QA because I didn't think that I would be good at coding. I would be good at what I do as a senior iOS developer right now. I didn't think that I would be able to do that. If I met myself in the past, I would have told myself like, hey, go for mobile. I know, like, I know Swift is the new language and Swift is evolving and like, you probably need to pick up Objective-C, like, do it. You can do it. You can do it. It will take you as long, as much time, as much it will take you like to become a really badass QA engineer. And uh, with your ability to communicate and put yourself out there, like, here we go, just do it. But my imposter syndrome stopped me there because I thought, I, I, like, I'm not technical. But I am. I, I, like, apparently I am. Like, I work at five Fortune 500 companies as an iOS developer. I develop really dope features that users are using right now. Apparently, I know I, I know a thing or two probably how to do mobile development, right? So it was a lie. And this is how imposter syndrome may uh, in, uh, uh, affect you. Or vice versa, you are going for too many things, too many programming languages because I'm not good at anything. I might as well just create value. I might as well just learn it all and see what sticks like, like spaghetti at the wall. No, pick up your industry, pick up your specialty, pick up your niche.
and don't listen to that lie and don't, listen, don't listen to that imposter syndrome voice in your head. Another thing that you might think is that, oh, I'm not landing a job because I'm not good at algorithms and data structures. And listen, in different specialties have a little different ways to interview, okay? Well, different specialties have di different ways to interview. There are specialties that they're more like uh, algorithms and data structures a little bit more prevalent. And there are specialties that they're like where algorithms and data structures are less prevalent. Okay, so, okay. So, but in my, in my experience, yeah, I had interviews with algorithms and data structures that I bombed because, you know, I'm, I'm not good at linker questions. I'm I, this is something that I am not quite good at it. But I still was able to go after good companies, high profile companies, Fortune 500 companies, land dope jobs, work at dope teams. And I, like, I, I, I honestly quite enjoy that. So you can do it too. But the reason why you're not doing it, the reason why you're stuck in the loop is because deep down the imposter syndrome. And you may not even know how to put yourself out there. You not, may not even know how to develop your executive presence. So what I want you to do, join me for my live stream series next week. So it's going to be about nine, nine live streams, right? So over the course of three weeks or so, right? So join my live streams. If you can't join me live, you can always watch recap. They're on my YouTube page. They're, they will be on my LinkedIn page. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, watch my uh, live streams. And uh, if you need help, if you realize that like, okay, he's talking to me, this is me, like I need to figure out how to put myself out there. I need to figure out how, like how to land jobs and how to land better opportunities. DM me, send me a message, grab a free coaching call with me, see if I can help you. So, because here's like, like here's a little story about tough market, Tough situation, high competition. I get, like, if you haven't watched the live stream where I was talking about how I got laid off and land a job literally a week later, you should definitely watch it, right? What? I got laid off and I landed a job. Like, I literally got in touch with recruiter, like, maybe, like, a few hours later, if not the next day. Um, and then we... Uh, Arranged the interview. Interview went great. Went and job offer. But it's because of the executive presence. It's because of consistent work. It's because I put myself out there. It's because I show up and show up every week. Every day, to be honest with you. Like here on LinkedIn. And uh, regularly on my uh, YouTube channel as well. This is the executive presence. You can do it too, and I want to help you do it because you can do it. And there's no reason, there's absolutely no reason, no matter, like the job market is not as terrible so software developers have to suffer for over 18 months without a job. This is not that bad, y'all. This is not that bad, I promise you. So tune in for my live streams, okay? If you need help, the link is in the description box. You know what to do. Um, and this is it for I have for you. Um, I, I really wish you well and I wish you luck and uh, I, you can do it. And I, I'm, I'm here for you, y'all. Bye, y'all.